Hello and welcome to a book podcast. Book 1. The Icarus Deception by Seth Godin. How high will you fly? Blurb. What are you afraid of? The old rules. Play it safe. Stay in your comfort zone. Find an institution. A set of rules to stick to. Keep your head down. Don't fly too close to the sun. The new truth. It's better to be sorry than safe. You need to fly higher than ever. In his bravest and most challenging book yet, Seth Godin shows how we can thrive in an economy that rewards art, not compliance. He explains why true innovators focus on trust, remarkability, leadership and stories that spread. And he makes a passionate argument for why you should be treating your work as art. The path of the artist isn't for the faint of heart, but Godin shows why it's your only chance to stand up, stand out and make a difference. The time to seize new ground and work without a map is now. So what are you going to do? The Icarus Deception was published in 2012. The Icarus Deception Art is frightening. Art isn't pretty. Art isn't painting. Art isn't something you hang on the wall. Art is what we do when we're truly alive. If you've already decided that you're not an artist, it's worth considering why you made that decision and what it might take to unmake it. If you've announced that you have no talent in anything, then you're hiding. Art might scare you. Art might bust you. But art is who we are and what we do and what we need. An artist is someone who uses bravery, insight, creativity and boldness to challenge the status quo. And an artist takes it, all of it, the work, the process, the feedback, from those we seek to connect with personally. Art isn't a result, it's a journey. The challenge of our time is to find a journey worthy of your heart and your soul. We are all artists now. How long are you going to wait? They told you to get your resume in order, to punch your ticket, to fit in and to follow instructions. They told you to swallow your pride, not to follow your dream. They promised trinkets and prizes and possibly riches if you would just suck it up and be part of the system. If you would merely do what you were told and conform. They sold you debt and self-storage and reality TV shows. All in exchange for what would happen later. When it was your turn, it's your turn. You are not your career. Your ability to follow instructions is not the secret to your success. You are hiding your best work, your best insight and your best self from us every day. We know how much you care and it's a shame that the system works overtime to push you away from the people and the projects you care about. The world does not owe you a living But just when you needed it, a door was opened for you to make a difference. It's too bad that so much time has been wasted, but it would be unforgivable to wait any longer. You have the ability to contribute so much. We need you now. This is a book for you. It's a book for anyone who has been overlooked or brainwashed or seduced into being invisible. A revolution is here, our revolution, and it is shining a light on what we've known deep down for a long time. You are capable of making a difference, of being bold and of changing more than you are willing to admit. You are capable 
of making art. The writer then gives the analogy of how to capture a fox, how to trap it. So basically you create a large wooden fence, leave some bait and then the fox will be suspicious at first but then he'll take the bait and then as the weeks go on you build a third wall and a, and a gate and eventually the fox will be trapped. This is a this of course is what happened to us. The industrial age built the trap where mirrored in but it didn't build the trap all at once that took centuries to perfect and we were seduced. Seduced by the bait of decent pay and plenty of prizes. Seduced by the apparent security of the enclosure and once the gate was shut we were kept in by the threat of shame, the amplification of risk and society's reliance on more and shinier prizes. For us though the situation is even more poignant than it is for the fox as the industrial age has faded away and has been replaced by the connection economy. The wide open reality of our new economic revolution. The fence has been dismantled, it's gone. But most of us have no idea that we're no longer fenced in. We've been so thoroughly brainwashed and intimidated and socialised that we stay huddled together waiting for instructions when we have the first best and once in a lifetime chance to do something extraordinary instead. This book revolves around a simple assumption on my part, the author, that you know how to be human and how to make art. We don't need to be taught to make art, but sometimes we need permission to do so. Following instructions is overrated. So the introduction, part zero, art, the comfort zone and the chance of a lifetime. Art is the truly human act of creating something new that matters to another person. The only refuge left, the only safe path is to be the one who makes art. As an interesting side note, I have noticed anecdotally when, for example, I'm walking on the treadmill, I really enjoy reading books and um, just speaking out loud into a headset microphone so I can sort of hear my own voice. So it feels like I'm on a radio and the time goes by really quickly because I'm engaged and I'm producing something as opposed to when I'm just passively watching a YouTube video. The time seems to drag on even though it's entertaining what I'm watching. I still prefer to read which I feel like is more active than passive. Okay so back to the book. Part zero. Art, the comfort zone and the chance of a lifetime. Why make art? Because you must. The new connected economy demands it and will reward you for nothing else. Because you can. Art is what it is to be human. The Icarus Deception. Just south of the Greek island of Samos lies the Icarian Sea. Legend has it that this is where Icarus died, a victim of his hubris. His father, Daedalus, was a master craftsman. I apologize for my mispronunciation of the Greek words. I might best. Banished to prison for sabotaging the work of King Minos, captor of the Minotaur, Daedalus created a brilliant escape plot described in the myth that we were told as children. He fashioned a set of wings for himself and his son. After affixing the wings with wax, they set out to escape. Daedalus warned Icarus not to fly too close to the sun. Entranced by his magical ability to fly, Icarus disobeyed and flew too high. We all know what happened next. The wax melted and Icarus, the beloved son, lost his wings, 
tumbled into the sea and died. The lesson of this myth, don't disobey the king, don't disobey your father. Don't imagine that you're better than you are. And most of all, don't ever believe that you have the ability to do what a god might do. The part of the myth you weren't told. In addition to telling Icarus not to fly too high, Daedalus instructed his son not to fly too low, too close to the sea, because the water would ruin the lift in his wings. Society has altered the myth, encouraging us to forget the part about the sea, and created a culture where we constantly remind one another about the dangers of standing up, standing out, and making a ruckus. Industrials have made hubris a cardinal sin, but conveniently ignored a far more common failing, settling for too little. It's far more dangerous to fly too low than too high, because it feels safe to fly low. We settle for low expectations and small dreams and guarantee ourselves less than we are capable of. By flying too low, we shortchange not only ourselves, but also those who depend on us or might benefit from our work. We're so obsessed about the risk of shining brightly that we've traded in everything that matters to avoid it. The path that's available to each of us is neither reckless stupidity nor mindless compliance. No, the path that's available to us is to be human, to do art and to fly far higher than we've been taught is possible. We've built a world where it's possible to fly higher than ever and the tragedy is that we've been seduced into believing that we ought to fly ever lower instead.